Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions – Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love Group and is part of the Education and Love series. In the How and Why I Remain Unloving Q&A presentation, Jesus answers questions from the audience about the material covered in the previous presentation How and Why I Remain Unloving. Recorded on the 21st of February 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. I don't know if you heard the words of that song by Alanis Morissette. It's called Excuses. <laughs> and she, she lists all these different excuses and then she says, I've served her so well. <laughs> um, it's, uh, that's the trouble with excuses. We think they're serving us, but they're actually harming our lives, eh? Hey? Yeah. All right. Q&A time for 50 minutes. Let's get started. Who's on our mics? Thank you, girls. All right. So if we come down to Ange, if we start with Ange first. We don't have to start with you first. Let's go to Pierre. So um, on this list with excuses, mm -hmm. um, they are not real beliefs in our soul? Um, they are real beliefs in our soul, Pierre. The problem is that we're, we're, we want them to remain. That's the problem. We're excusing them being beliefs in our soul. We're justifying them being beliefs in our soul. We're justifying their remaining in our soul. So they are real. There's no, there's no doubt about the fact that they are real. So, so when you feel like, for example, that God doesn't exist, well, that's a feeling that you have inside of it that it's real. But, but, but you can work out whether God exists or not. You can actually change that. Right? You can actually go through a process of connecting with God and then you'll realise that God actually does exist. So, so, so while you're using that justification that God doesn't exist, you're basically using it as an excuse. So, so while it's a real emotion in you, you can change your real emotions. You can. And this is what I'm getting at, is that many of you are going, oh, it's a real emotion in me, but I can't change it. Right? And this is why on earth there's so much of this concept or belief that, that nobody really ever changes. Right? And it's interesting when you even examine things like iridology, the reality is nobody ever really changes after the age of three or four or five. If you look in the eye, the iris, most of the time the injuries are set and from then on they never clear up right the way through to death and they just get worse and worse and worse. Right? But they never get better. Right? What I'm suggesting is that no, the reason why they never get better is because we still keep wanting to use the same excuses over and over again. They are emotions that we need to release, but you're able to release emotion. You are. So there's no reason for them to remain in you. Does that make sense? So, so if I feel um, I have been created, I have a choice to to make a different choice i can make a different choice but i have been created by god that i'm not able to do a different choice do i need to no, see that, feel that, that to, re to remove like a real feeling? well that's not even true so you can't feel something that's not true who, who caused you to believe that you can't make different choices it certainly wasn't god right who was it my parents yeah, your parents. So, so you see, you're doing what we talked about yesterday, blaming God for something and then trying to process that. But the reality is it needs to be put, you need to put the emotion with the person that created it, then you'll be able to process the emotion. It's got to be in truth, you follow? This is why most people's processing gets circular because, it, because they're not actually facing the truth about who created that particular emotion. So when you have a belief that God doesn't exist, don't, do you think that came from God? Of course it didn't. <laughs> it came from this environment we're living in. It came from the upbringing. It came from a whole series of events that then caused you to blame God for what other people did. It, 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 it's caused by a lot of other things and you need to find what it's caused by. But what I'm saying is those things are emotions in you. Yes, they are. However, God made you to release them. 
So stop saying that they, it's justified having them in you. So every time I say, oh, but I have this in me, I go, well, you don't have to have that in you. You can release that. You don't, it doesn't have to remain. So, so why do you want to have it remain? Most of the time we want to have it remain because it helps us justify our next action. It helps us justify our unloving behaviour after that point. That's why we want it to remain. And that's not what I'm saying to you in this discussion is it's not a valid reason. Just because I have an emotion in me that says that I can't trust you, it doesn't mean that I can't trust you. It means that I have an emotion in me that tells me I can't trust you and if I release that emotion I will be able to trust you or I'll be able to measure whether you're trustworthy or not and then trust you if you are. Do you see? Right. Justifying the emotion remaining within oneself is worse than the emotion being in oneself. It's another layer. On, it's the wrong direction. Yeah, because if you justify it, it will remain in yourself. It will remain in oneself. But if, if you see that it's there, that's okay. It's there. Like all of you have different emotions that are there. Okay. That's okay. It's the justification of keeping them there that's not okay. Right? So we have to be honest first. Then, then ask ourselves why. What, why is it positive? We, we feel it's positive to keep them. That's then, a very good point, yes. Yeah. What, what you need to do is feel how much you want to keep some of these emotions in you and how these particular emotions support your current life choices and decisions. You need to feel that. So, you know, every time you have a... Like, for example, some of you have been serial, what I'd call serial mo mo mono monogamists. <laughs> Do you know what I mean by that? Where you just have one person after another person after another person as a partner and you've had 20, 30 partners in a, period of, a short period of time of your life and it just keeps on going and going and going and going and going. Well, well that's an issue, certainly, right? It's a moral, there's moral issues there. What emotions within you justify you keep doing that keeping on doing that and how would it feel if you never had another relationship unless that person was your soulmate what would you you know how would that feel what what are what feelings are you avoiding by having these serial relationships right without actually first working out who you are what your desires are and then attracting the other half well, what's causing you to make these choices and decisions, in other words? And, and we don't need to judge it. We need to analyse it. When I say analyse it, we need to see that it's there, that that particular, there's a whole group of emotions supporting that belief. And, and I don't want to get rid of those emotions while I believe I should be able to go along and have any woman I want, right? Because it supports my concept that that's okay, doesn't it? If I, my, all my emotions must support my concept that it's okay to have a whole series of relationship after relationship after relationship after relationship, whether they last a week, a month or whatever. And, and later on, right, 10 years later, I've had 30 women and, and that's okay. Or is it okay? Is, is it God's view of love? Probably not, right? So, so obviously there's something in me that justifies that behaviour. What is it? And what, why is it that I don't want to give that up? There must be reasons why I don't want to give that up. What does it give me? It feeds some addiction. It makes me feel good. Or what, what does it make me do? Why, why is it that I can't live without uh, another person for, for, a, for a month or, or without needing to go into another relationship? Why is that? What, what, what causes me to do that? What addictions do I have? The fact that I have them is okay. When I say, okay, they're there, they were created probably by events in my life, some of which I chose to do and some of which other people chose to do. Th that's not so much of a problem as denying or excusing or justifying or minimising or shifting the blame for them being there. Right? Because when I do that, I have no chance of change. No chance. So the danger, the danger isn't having the negative emotion. 
the danger is what you do to justify keeping the negative emotion. That makes sense? That's the real danger. So, pass across the edge. Um, my question relates to the choice that we talked about, that you just talked about. Yep. Um, I, I feel like I'm connecting with, um, you know, my choice and that I'm still a child and want to be spoon-fed and all of that. Yep. But when it comes to the person who's been sexually molested, yep. I want to make all sorts of excuses for that other person. Yeah. So there's obviously a, a disconnect, you know. And I, don't, I, mean, I want to say that they've had other ex circumstances. Yes. See, see, from God's perspective, no matter what has happened to you, there is no good reason for you to be unloving. Yeah. You could have been tortured, you could have been abused sexually or otherwise. There is no good excuse for you to be unloving in God's, for, from God's perspective. That's God's view of love. Yeah. See, on earth though, whenever we feel, that we feel there are good excuses to be unloving. Yeah. We do. That's why wars happen. Mm -hmm. certain, uh, certain things big enough for, for a whole country to go off to war about it. Because they all believe that excuse was big enough to be unloving. And, and this is the problem we have, Ange, is that, is that God doesn't, there's no um, allowance for that from God's perspective. <laughs> there is no reason ever to be unloving from God's perspective, yeah. ever. Yeah. Doesn't matter if someone's torturing you, abusing you, treating you badly, verbally or physically, um, there is no excuse for you to become unloving. That's, that's God's opinion. Right? The trouble is the majority of us on earth ha don't agree with that. Mm. We don't. Mm. And we've got to be honest about that. We don't agree with that for lots of reasons. Mm. So we, we, we believe that you know, if somebody abuses a child, right, then we can now become unloving with that person. We can now yell and scream at them. We can now cut yeah. their you know, penis off yeah. and we can do a lot of other things if we, you know, that would justify right up to torturing them and murdering them and knocking them off. There's plenty of movies for entertainment that have been written about you know, retribution because most of the planet believes in it. Right? Many of you continue to believe in it because you're acted out every day. You know, if somebody treats you bad, you then go and treat somebody them badly some way. Right? That's retribution. God doesn't believe in it. It's a human condition. And it's a human condition that's flawed. It needs to be adjusted. Right? Now, what, you're, what you need to do here is feel about, if it's about other people, then it's not about other people. <laughs> you understand what I mean by that? So whenever I go, oh, isn't it terrible how these people got treated badly over there and I'm crying about it, watching it on television. No, it's not about them, it's about you. There's something going on inside of you that needs to be released that, that, that this particular event is triggering. Right? So obviously there's something about abuse that triggers you internally that needs to be felt. I would say that it's not necessarily abuse. It could be anything where someone has been you know, really badly treated, mm -hmm. you know, two people really badly treated ha with one thing, like whether it's violence or neglect or yeah, whatever. Yeah, but Ange, you're, you're pretty hypocritical about this. Like I've seen you treat Rob pretty badly for an extended period of time. Yeah. And have no, like, and under your, under your uh, guidelines, he should be in retribution, but he's not. So, you know. Yeah. There's something inside of you that believes in retribution. You follow? You believe in it. You believe it's justified to treat somebody badly under certain circumstances. Look, I, I don't... I'm um, not, it's not a question. I'm no, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> arguing with that. But I feel like I was, what I was saying was that I can, I can understand why they might behave badly. No, I don't. Because I don't. All, a whole lot of other circumstances that, that yeah, but made God that doesn't person. understand, nor nor does anybody who's at one with God understand why they would behave badly. Because all it does, all violence does, is beget more violence, right? Mm. Once you understand this basic principle at, in your heart, mm. you would never go. I understand why that person who's been abused has just murdered that person, right? You might see the cause and effect of the behaviour, mm. but you still wouldn't justify the person's internal decision. 
Do you follow me? Their decision was wrong. Not justified, but just understand that there's other circumstances that may have made that one ch person decide, yes, I'm going to abuse, and the other person... All right, well, let's take this to an extreme, all right? Because quite often this will help you make, it, make the right choice. There's two people. They've both been sexually abused as yeah. children. Yeah. One's a guy, one's a guy, and one's a girl. Yeah. The girl goes off and helps children. Yeah. The guy goes off and abuses other children. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How do you feel about the guy going off and abusing other children? Well, you say that's just a choice. And m what my internal belief is that, no, there were other circumstances on top of that that made that man choose that way. You know, because no, we've had see, so many other... See, this is a complete falsehood that you're, you're encouraging yourself to believe. I know many people believe this. And, and it's completely wrong. No. Right. If that was true, yeah. there would be no hells. Because God would be saying, oh, that person didn't make a choice because their, their life did that. And that was, you know, that person, oh, the poor person, yeah. I'll, I'll rub all that out for them and so forth. Yeah. yeah and God doesn't do that. No. And why doesn't God do that? Because God knows that those people made a choice. A choice. <laughs> and the fact that you believe they haven't is a problem. Mm. Right. But also you believing they haven't or that there's mitigating circumstances also lets you off, off the, the hook, hook for all your unloving behaviour for that's mitigating right. circumstances right. towards other people. That's right. yeah. And that's one of the justifications yes. that you have. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in other words, you're basically saying to yourself, they have mitigating circumstances and now there's various yes. degrees of yes. mitigating circumstances. Yes. Like, so we sort of have like an internal scale here yeah. of this is an extreme event up here and this is a le less extreme event and this is a less extreme event. So that less extreme event uh, encourages this behaviour and that more extreme event will encourage this behaviour and so forth. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's really what you're saying internally. Yeah. Yeah. And then you say that, and because you have this belief inside of yourself, you uh, judge your own behaviour the same way. You go, yes, I did that, but mm. the reason why I did that was yeah. because I had this happen to me and that happened to me and this spirit influence and that thing occur and all this. And all it is making excuses. Yeah. You did it because you make a choice. Yeah. Yep. And sure, there was all these other things that happened to you, but you still made a choice. Yeah. And God, and, and the reason why the law of compensation exists is because of choice. Yeah. And, and I know that many new, particularly people who come from new age circles, believe that, you know, oh, this is really unfair that God assigns, you know, the choice, but it's not unfair. God's laws know exactly who made that choice and when they made the choice and how they made the choice. Everything's written in the soul of the person and that interacts with the law. It's perfect in its operation. And basically what, what you finish up saying to yourself is, no, if, if that's happened to that, if this bad thing here, you know, this is, you could say this is the scale of badness, you know, that happened, and this is the scale of action that the person took. So that they had this particular badness happen, so they are allowed to take that action. And this person had this level of badness happen, so they are allowed to take this extreme action. Right? Now, I know that exists in law, that actually, that concept exists in human law. Like, so, so there is such a thing as like, um, a woman murdering her husband because she's been abused all of her life yeah. by her husband. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, many women, particularly in Western countries, have gotten off completely free without any tr prison or any, t any time or any, some, any correction of any kind or any psychological help of any kind. And they've gotten off because they've been abused all their life and then they eventually cracked and they stabbed him to death. Right? And there is the internal belief in most people on this planet that that's justifiable. But that's the world's view of love, see? It's not God's. Doesn't matter what you do to me, it's not any unloving behaviour on my part is, un, is not justifiable from God's perspective. Right. Yeah, I'm going to have to work on that, hey? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yep. Thank you. Not only you, but the majority of the planet. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not something that's... It's not a problem that, that is unique to one person or a few people. It's a problem that the majority of people on this planet believe in that. 
well, you can see the results. Like we go to war, we, we, we're, we're okay. Like I said earlier, we're, we're okay with a million, uh, 100 million children dying every year. We're okay with that. Because of what? There's got to be reasons. Yeah. And the reasons are because of this justification process that we go through. And, and it's completely flawed when it comes to God's perspective of love. Yeah. The key, the key is to want, firstly, to see it, not judge it, see it, and go, okay, what do I need to release now to allow myself to shift on this particular concept? Right? And many of you are very angry right, about it, and so you don't want to shift on the concept. It's like you want to hold on to this concept for dear life. You want to have the internal feeling that you're allowed to justify certain actions and behaviour because of other bad or worse events that have happened that you feel are justified to enact these resulting behaviours. Right? And you've got to give all that up if you want God's perspective of love. And while you don't give it up, you won't feel God's love. You can't. You can't. So, so what's happening, I see, is that it, oftentimes we're dearly holding on to these really pet belief systems, thinking that they are actually enabling our positive development, thinking that they're actually helping us in our day-to-day -day life, thinking that they've supported us, when the reality is they've done quite the opposite, and not only quite the opposite to ourselves, but also quite the opposite to the world in general. Right? And this is, is a big problem on the planet, this justification of behaviour based on past things that have happened to me. If something bad's happened to me, I'm justified having something bad happen to you. And, and a lot of the times, we don't even care whether the person we're treating badly treated us badly. We don't care. We, you know, it might be someone who's really nice and we treat them badly. We say, well, that's because uh, I was treated badly when I was a kid or whatever. We, we don't even care whether it's just. Well, God does. <laughs> God does. All right. And that's one of the differences between God's love and ours. Yeah. God does care that, you know, for example, for yourself, Ange, when you harm your husband, justifying the harm because of what's happened to you in the past, you know, God cares about that. God, God cares about that. God's saying, God, God's saying to you, Ange, why are you doing that? You're not feeling my love. You're not feeling my love because you prevent it from flowing because you believe in a completely different concept of love than I do, is what God's saying to you. And this is the thing, is that we often do believe in a completely different concept of love and we need to give those concepts up. Yeah. Instead of justifying them remaining. Yeah. Now, for many of you, you'll go through some very terrifying feelings when you do that. You know, Having, having the internal feeling inside of yourself that you are allowed to take violent action or, for many of you ladies, your husbands are allowed or the man that's with you is allowed to take a violent action if you are threatened, right? Many of you believe that. To give that up, you're going to have to process through fear, aren't you, of some kind, of what that violent action may finish up Entail, entailing towards yourself and that will cause you to work through that fear and release it once you've worked through that fear and release it you probably won't believe that thing anymore and particularly if you receive some of God's love you certainly will not believe that anymore yep. this is where we've got to be very careful with our justifications yep. okay if we go Kate and then Fab <coughs> Um, my question was just about with the deconstructing them. So mm -hmm. I've sort of, I suppose, tried to start with deconstructing one mm -hmm. and then I sort of found another one yep. and it got a bit cyclical. Or s s is that a word? Cyclical? Yeah, yeah cyclical, yeah. Um, and so say it seems like... What did we learn yesterday about cyclical emotions? It's relating, there's childhood incidents relating to each stage of the cycle. Yeah. 
and that each stage of the cycle needs to be worked on. Remember that? Yeah. So if we have cyclical emotions where we have one emotion, let's say it's fear, and then we find when that fear gets triggered, we go to anger. And then when that anger, it, when we start feeling that anger, we feel, oh, oh, we're not allowed to feel angry. Um, that's really bad. So we go into some kind of judgment of the anger itself. Right? And then we condemn ourselves and self-punish. And then we go back into our fear, of course, <laughs> about and now how not only not only about the event, but now how bad I am and where I run. And then, <laughs> and then, and it goes around in circles like that. Then it means that I don't want to address any of those emotions. I'm just not seeing how it relates <laughs> to what I'm thinking. Okay, so explain There's more of what you're thinking. Maybe, maybe resistant. Um, so I was thinking like I wanted to start with working on the problem that I believe I can't cope with my emotions. Like that one seems to be a problem that drives a lot of um, a lot of my problems with So so this statement that I can't I cannot cope with my emotions. That's like one of the excuses. That's one of the feelings you have, yeah. Yep. And you're asking how to address that particular thing. Well, then I was sort of thinking um, I wanted to have a relationship with God to, I suppose, like to pray to God about that issue. So yep. then I was sort of like I want to, yeah, like focus on developing my faith in God. Uh, I don't see how you can have faith in God when you believe that. Right, yeah. Because God created you to feel all of your emotions and you're saying that you can't. So, so you can't manufacture faith in something that you don't have faith in, can you? Yes. Um, As you well know. That's why it's cyclical and it's not yeah, working. So this one seems to be the first one I need to do before I can do other ones. Well, let's see, my way of handling that is okay. I feel I can't cope with my emotions, but what does God feel? God made me to cope. He wants me to release my emotions. Yeah, God made me cope with any emotion. So the, so the truth is, this is, this is the false belief, isn't it not? And the true belief is God made me to cope with anything. <laughs> which obviously includes feeling my emotions, right? Yeah. Okay, and there's been a lot of people historically that can prove the truth of that. Yeah. And isn't there? It's, I've seen it, you know, demonstrated through y yourself and, and Mary. No, not only and through us, is that there's heaps of people who have had traumatic experiences who have released those traumatic experiences emotionally and they've been far more extremely traumatic experiences than you've personally experienced in your own life. So that's an indication that God made you to cope with anything so there's the proof god made you to cope for anything so what do you do now so then you you know that's your feeling this is the truth mm. so do i need to so feeling how much i want to keep that belief inside of me was one thing you mentioned like feeling my investment in that belief correct what's your investments in these beliefs what are they So if we write down this process of investment, you're invested in that belief. What does, the, what does that belief help you do? Yeah, what's coming up is I just don't want to feel my childhood things. Okay, it helps you avoid childhood pain, doesn't it? You wanting to believe that helps you avoid childhood pain. So the real problem is... You're trying to avoid childhood pain and you want that to be true. You desperately want that to be true. Right? It's interesting, as soon as you say what the truth is, you can now feel. Right? The truth is you're avoiding childhood pain. You realise that your childhood was quite painful and, and you're using this false belief to avoid this the feeling of this. You follow? That's what the justification does. So can you see what I've had to do? It's quite simple. 
I've had to realize that this is a false belief. It's not something I have to process. It's a false belief that I want to be there. I've made it there. I want it there. Because, because when, it gives me, when I have it there, it gives me this, the outcome of having the investment satisfied. And the investment is avoid my childhood pain. So how do we reverse it? It's quite simple. All you need to just sit down and start praying to God about and feeling about is, I had a terrible childhood. I had a terrible childhood. I need to feel this pain. I need to feel this pain. And you'll start connecting to the pain. It's quite simple. So you don't need to feel that you don't want to feel the pain? Well, you, yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> but this is what I'm saying. You need to allow yourself to go, okay, I'm, I'm choosing this belief because I don't want to feel my pain. Be honest about it. Right? I, I, I want to avoid my childhood pain. It's very interesting when you say, I want to avoid my childhood pain. You say that for me. I, I want, want to, to avoid my, my childhood pain. I'm allowed to avoid my childhood pain. I'm allowed to. You say that. I'm allowed to. I'm allowed to. I'm allowed to. You're allowed to avoid your childhood pain. God's allowing you to. You're allowed to avoid it. Does it help your life very much? No, it's not. But you're allowed to avoid it. And it's interesting psychologically what happens when you say to yourself that you're allowed to avoid it if you want to. The irony is you start feeling it generally. I don't, though. I get maybe that's where my harshness on myself comes in. Correct. You, like, you don't because you I judge have it. I because I really want. No, you're allowed. You're, you're right now choosing to avoid your childhood pain, and you're allowed to. So, should I just focus on that? Because yeah. I'm really blocked about yeah, that. Yeah, stop telling yourself to. that you can't cope with emotion because it's just a furphy. Yeah. You know, a, a false belief, a furphy. In, a, in, a, in Australian colloquialism, is a false belief, a self-delusion. It's a self-delusion. This is the self-delusion. This is the truth. That's why you want the self-delusion. And rather than actually tell yourself this, you want to tell yourself that. That's the problem. So I should be able to just go straight to that emotion if I'm open? Yeah, I'd start with I'm allowed to avoid my childhood pain. So, so when I feel really sad in a day, I just sit down on the floor and I just go, I'm allowed to avoid my childhood pain. And then you're able to connect to emotion. Well, the question is, do I want to? And I go, well, I don't know if I really want to avoid my childhood pain. And I've got child it's, it's acknowledging that I've got childhood pain, right, that I could feel if I chose to. You follow? This is, yeah. this is saying you can't choose. You want to believe that. Yeah, that I can't make another choice. That's why you've created that belief. So this, this is a false belief. Yes? That's the true belief. That's God's belief. You don't want to accept God's at this stage because accepting God's will mean that you will feel your childhood pain. <laughs> Probably. Right? You will, if you accepted the true belief. So you don't want to accept the true belief. That would be good like to get to that point. No, you don't think it's good. No, okay. <laughs> don't tell yourself it's good when you don't think it's good. You think it's bad. Yeah. You think that's bad, that's why you've created that belief. You understand? You think, uh, you think feeling, if I just... You think feeling childhood pain... is bad. So, to support that belief, you've had to create a number of other false beliefs, which you've created. Uh, they're your responsibility. And one of them is that you can't cope with your emotion. But, but the trouble is now, I've told you that God's truth is that God made you to cope with anything. And now there's a conundrum. <laughs> right? There's this opposites going on inside. It's saying a sec, are you just saying uh, God created me to uh, experience anything? And I'm feeling like, no, no, I can't cope with anything. I can't cope with all my emotion. And, God's saying, and, and they're just saying, yes, you can. 
And I'm going, no, I can't. Yes, you can. No, you can't. No, yes, you can. No, you can't. No, yes, you can. And so forth, right? And, and so there's this internal, like, terrible thing, war, war going on in your brain, right, about these two positions. But, but you're not allowing yourself to see why you're warring about it, which is because you want to retain the false belief. Because the false belief supports the avoidance of the feeling. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, thanks. And that's where you're often getting stuck. And then you go and judge the false belief. You, you go one layer further, judge that. So. Well, I can see the benefits of the other belief, like I guess... Logic. No, you can't. Really? Even no, like you can't. Logic. You won't until you've actually gone through the process. You can only see them intellectually? Correct, and, yeah. correct. And I you have some... feel the benefits. And you them. have some spirits around you saying, yeah, go for it, go for it, Kate. And you're going, no, I don't want to go for it. I want to, I don't want to, I want to avoid my childhood pain. And they're going, no, Kate, go for it. Remember, remember God's truth. God made me cope with anything. Oh, okay. And so in your brain you got, no, God didn't make me cope with anything. I can't cope with my emotion. And they're saying, yes, yes, God made you cope with anything. God made you cope with anything. And, and, and so you're there going through your life and that something event happens and you sit, sit down and you're almost about to cry and you're going, no, I can't cry because I can't cope with my emotion. And they're going, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can cry. You're allowed to cry. That's what you guys are doing. Exactly that what I'm saying is what they're doing. And, and, and they know that the only reason why you have this belief is because you want to actually avoid this. So what I would focus on is, I want to avoid that. I want to avoid feeling my childhood pain. Let yourself see it as a choice. Does that make sense? And then after a while, once you've noticed the choice you're making and its results, the pain that results from making that choice is quite high. So, and that m physical as well as emotional and also intellectual pain results from those choices. Once you start measuring the pain of those choices, then you might make a different one. And when I say might, well, that depends on your choice. It depends on how sensitive you allow yourself to be to the pain and how much you want the pain no longer to be there and what I've noticed a lot of people do is they go they go well I don't want to feel my childhood pain and I don't want to feel this pain that I'm in now <laughs> so I can't do anything and I'm just going to be numbed out zoned out just try to drugs drink out whatever I can do to avoid both both things and that's you avoiding a decision <laughs> yeah that's been what's happening for me yeah and there's a huge amount of pain in avoiding a decision. Mm. Yeah. And after a while, a person who avoids decisions realises that there's a huge amount of pain. And so they choose to never avoid a decision again. But you haven't got to that point yet. No, I haven't. <laughs> and it's worrying, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, the question becomes how much pain is going to be necessary before you make the decision? Do you see? What I feel personally is it, uh, it feels a lot better just feeling that than any other decision. Uh, it does. It feels a lot better feeling that childhood pain than any other choice you can make. Because once you feel it, whatever you've been attracting through, by having it in you disappears as well. So not only do you get rid of the pain itself, but you also get rid of the incessant creation of the same kind of events as well. So it's wonderful. Like, but, but you've got to go through that experience at least once to actually believe that. You follow? Yeah. yeah. And, it, and the very first time you go through that experience, that's when you're going to be the most terrified about it. But terror is just a feeling too. And God made you cope with anything. You see, this is where it gets back down, I feel, to having the, a, a supreme amount of faith in God. You've just got to learn to trust that in God's goodness. God made me cope with anything. God's helping me. You know, all I need to do is ask and God's going to help me because God's good. Right? And so once you start to feed yourself these truths, eventually you start trusting that they are true and acting upon them. Right? Do you mean feed it like intellectually? Because I can't... 
Yeah, well, you remember when Mary talked to you in 2014 assistance group about developing the will muscle. Remember yes. she said there was four things you need to do to develop your will muscle. Well, one of those things was feeding yourself on truth. In be and being your own pep squad, like in telling, like yeah, what telling you're saying, you my guides are saying. Yeah, well, they're, they're already there trying to do that. But yeah. of course, th you know, they can't do it as well as you could do it with yourself because cause <laughs> you've got all blockages with them, right? But you can do it for yourself the best. But I see most people telling themselves the opposite of truth. So, you, for example, you're doing that with this. You're telling yourself over and over and over and over again, I can't cope with my emotion, I can't cope with my emotion, I can't cope with my emotion. You'd be better off going, I believe I can't cope with my emotion, but that's a lie. You'd be at least better off doing that, but you don't. So tell myself, God made me to cope. God made me with cope with my emotion. Do you see? Bit of confusion for me now. Yeah, because you've got two voices in your head. <laughs> One of which is coming from you saying God. <laughs> but but you see, what, I, what I'm suggesting to you is that you can't keep telling yourself the false belief. That's all I'm suggesting to you. And you are. Okay. So you don't need to work through it. Well, the false belief's not an emotion. As such, you just need to make another choice. Well, you need to at least start making the choice to not tell yourself that it's true. Don't you? It's like me saying, it's okay to kill you. I'm allowed to kill you. Is that true? From God's perspective, is that true? I suppose true? so. You can kill me if you... Is it okay to kill it's me? It's not you, okay, though? no. No. What, from God's perspective, what's, what, what would that do? That would cause a lot of damage to both of us. Yes, because it takes God. your free will away from you, doesn't it? Yeah. If I killed you. So a person who's a murderer, who wants to murder, can't go around telling themselves it's okay to do it. You no, me? no. But that's what you're doing with this emotion. So they, they can tell them, like, it's, if, is it a, like a personal truth and God's truth thing? Like they can, that might be their personal yeah, truth. Yeah, I can recognise that something in me, and you can recognise that you have this belief, right? Yeah. You can. I can recognise that I have a certain set of beliefs still about certain things that are out of harmony with God's truth. I know them to be. Right? I just haven't worked my way through the feeling of them yet. Do you follow me? So you can acknowledge, yes, you have this emotion. You have not worked your way through the feeling of that yet. You have an investment and that emotion helps you, this feeling helps you avoid the, the real problem, which is this childhood pain. That's the purpose for it. And, and you can start telling yourself this truth rather than this truth. At the moment, you're still telling yourself this as a truth. You're still saying that's true. Okay, yeah. Uh, right? Yep. You need to be telling yourself that this is true, <laughs> not that. The spirits with you are trying to tell you that's true. Okay, cool. Right? You just need to tell yourself that's true. And the reason why you want that to be true is because it helps you avoid this. You've got an investment in doing it. And the choice to give up the investment is a choice. But it's a soul-based one. Now, how do you change soul-based choices? Through developing the will muscle to make a change of the choice. So you're going to have to develop your will to feel childhood pain. Okay, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's how you make a different choice at the soul level. You have to develop your will to feel childhood pain. At the moment, you don't have a developed will to feel childhood pain. And this belief is supporting your lack of developed will. It's your justification. Your, your belief is, I, can't, I won't be able to cope with it, so it's pointless trying to do it. Yeah. Right? That's your belief. But this belief is what I would classify as a self-delusion supportive belief. It's not the truth. It's just what I would like to tell myself is the truth so that I can avoid the actual thing that needs to be done. Right. You follow that now, okay? Yeah, yeah. Yep, good I'm up. starting to. I think we could say no that. Thank you. Yeah, it's very important that you get those particular principles. I see it happening a lot, and I see it particularly with women as well, more than with men. 
And I don't know why that is, but I think partly it's because women have learned, uh, women, like I said uh, uh, yesterday, women are better at fragmenting themselves than men. They're definitely better at it. Um, you, you, for example, you're allowed, you're, for example, most, uh, I can give you many examples. Here's, here's one fairly common one. A lot of women will have sex with a man who they don't love. Right? They will. Now, a lot of men do it and know they're doing it. But a lot of women tell themselves that, it, that, that it's different to that. But a lot of times they're having sex with a man to have a child so that they can be loved by the child. And they're sort of just using the man as the sperm donor for the child. You follow? Now, a woman can do that more easily than a guy. A guy couldn't go... Most guys can't go and have a child unless they really want the child and the woman they're having the child with. Right? But a woman can do that. And the reason why is there's a whole series of emotions inside of the woman that dictate to her that having a child is of supreme importance to her womanhood. Whereas in a lot of men, having a child, and I'm talking about men in the Western world now, because in the Eastern you know, world is, it's very different, but in the Western world, a lot of men feel having a child is not that important to their sense of worth or their sense of being as a man. Right? And so there's a whole series of emotions that drive these behaviours. And what I'm suggesting to you is that m many women are able, because of these emotions, these other competing, what I'd classify as competing emotions, they're able to fragment themselves with, from their behaviour to a degree. Right? And therefore not see the connection between the false belief, the investment, or, and the real emotion. Right? Once you can see that and feel that, you will find you'll be able to process that better if you're a woman than a man. Right? Because the reality is women are also able to process grief better than men. Right? But, but only if they're not afraid of it. If they're afraid of it, that's different. Yep. All right? And there's a whole heap of reasons for that. Men have been educated from, from before birth, generally, that crying is the worst possible thing they can ever do. It's a, it's a huge display of weakness. For a woman, crying is not necessarily a weakness. But for a man, crying is definitely a weakness. So for a man, he, he, he almost loses his masculinity if he cries. He's losing his sense of worth if he cries. So he's got his worth issues tied up in sadness rather than his worth issues tied up in fear. You follow? So there's a whole heap of different things that are going on between the genders there. But, but if we, need, we need to understand, and I've already gone over time, haven't I? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. I've got ten more minutes. No, I've got four more minutes. Um, you know, we need, to, we need to see the false belief, see our investment in what we're trying to avoid and stop telling ourselves over and over again the false belief. Right? And we need to do that for ourselves. We're, we're the best person for that. Right? So, so one of the things I've been encouraging like Mary when she's living with me is to go, right, stop making me responsible for telling you what your false belief is and you work out what your false belief is, you work out what God's truth is about the matter and then you work out what your investment is. What are you trying to avoid? And then allow yourself to decide, do I want to keep avoiding that or not? Let yourself do that. Yeah. Now that's what I've had to do for myself. Yep, no, haven't had anybody doing that for me. So you're totally capable of having nobody do it for you, you do it for yourself. And in fact, a self-responsible being would probably do it for themselves, wouldn't they? If yeah. you think about it. Yeah. Okay, is there one more question we've got time for before we... It was fab, wasn't it? Fire. It's a bit <coughs> on what Ange was saying. <coughs> mm-hmm. Six months ago, I was watching this thing on the internet about a guy with thousands of people below him and he was telling his th truth that he thought he'd found that there was no such thing as free will and that if everyone lived the life of a serial killer, they'd end up being the serial killer. Like, he said that if you lived his life, you'd end up just like him, the right. kind of thing. And, and I struggled with that, but everything that you're saying about, you know, the choices that we make, everyone, we all really just have this choice to make all 
to choose to change everything that we do. Even like right now, even today, I can change, choose a different choice and start my experiment with God yep. instantly with this choice. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is, is, is it that simple? Like yeah. Could it be that simple? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. There's are emotional reasons that may impede you from making that choice from your heart and you need to work your way through those emotional reasons, obviously. But, but a person who really has made the choice will work through the emotional reasons. They will. They will choose to do it. And particularly once they know the benefits of working through their, emotional, their emotions and, and releasing the emotions, they will then definitely do it. So if you think about uh, the channelings that Mary did before we came to the group, you remember with Glenn how he passed over, he, 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 was, he was lone, he was pretty lonely and alone, and, and he spent a lot of time just like, you know, get, getting a bit angry and frustrated and then getting tired and exhausted and he was still alone, a lot of it. And, and remember, eventually he just made the choice to surrender to the anger so he, and that got him really exhausted. And then once he surrendered to the exhaustion, he started crying, yeah. right? Well, that's what's going to have to happen for most of you. You, you, you will eventually get to the point where you surrender to the, the exhaustion and start crying and then you go, why wasn't I crying years ago? <laughs> it's so good. It gets, you know, it, you, you, you then start to engage a positive feeling about the crying. So, so before then it's like, oh, I've got to cry, I know I've got to cry, but I'm not going to, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to, until the pain's so great that you eventually cry. And then after you cried, you go, wow, that feels heaps better. Why didn't I do that before? And that is part of the faith that needs to build for you to do it again on different subjects. Yeah. That's, That's part the experiment that we keep going with God and faith to yeah. make us choose. So it's not about forcing emotions to come up. It's about working out why you're shutting down the emotions. You're, God created you to feel emotion, right? So it's not about forcing those emotions that are out of harmony with love to come up. It's about working out why you want to keep those emotions that are out of harmony with love. So in Kate's case, she wants to keep it because she doesn't want to feel her childhood pain. That's why she wants to have these false beliefs. Does that make sense? Feeling the false belief is not going to work because the false belief is the mind's construction supporting the soul's decision. Do you get what I just said? You got your soul, it's made a choice. At the soul level, the choice is no Emotional pain. In other words, not allowed to feel any emotional pain. That's, that's your soul's choice. Now, sort of when I was about 33, I made a different choice. I made a choice. If there's any soul pain inside of me, I'm going to feel it. Right? So I made the choice to, be, to do it differently. But that, was that a choice that you made based on, your, on like a will that you just said, that's it, I'm going to start? No, I had a whole series of very negative events occur till I got to the point where I was totally alone and feeling suicidal and then I realized that actually I wanted to continue living even if it was just for the fact that I had some sons that I wanted to not harm for the rest of their life right and then I decided well I can't just live I've got to if I'm going to be an example with my sons I'm going to have to live positively how do I do that and then I then I realized that I'm going to have to do that by actually choosing to release everything inside of me that causes my own sadness right and, and so I, after that, did everything I possibly could. I, I saw a, a body therapist two times a week. I spent all my money doing it. I spent, I spent uh, two times a week seeing a body therapist. I, I spent two times a week seeing a, a person I could talk to about, you know, the sadness that I had and all those kind of things. I paid them, right? And then I spent the rest of my time writing about it. And then I spent, uh, I think I had about two hours a, w a day work. You know, the rest of the, all of my money went on it. Like I was at the stage. At this stage, I had nothing at all, and no house, no. No, I eventually got a car, but to, so that I could get to these people. But I had nothing else. And and in that place, I began to connect to the decision. I'm going to feel my emotional pain, no matter what. That essence that you had to make that choice out made it a desire. Yep. Yeah. And I made sure, and, and uh, honestly, I had my family saying, what are you doing, you stupid idiot? And they were pretty verbal with me, like, 
you know, they were, they, they were calling me names and all sorts of things while I'm trying to do this, right? So eventually I decided I chose, I had to live completely alone to, to do it because nobody around in my life supported it in any, in any way whatsoever. They all called it ha me having a breakdown, right? When I had actually made a choice to go through feeling some emotional pain, they called it a breakdown, you know, I've gone crazy now. You know, of course it got worse as soon as, you know, five, ten years later when I, when I remembered who I was, it even got worse after that. But even before then, they were thinking I was crazy because I was choosing to feel my emotional pain when they weren't, right? So, so yeah, make that choice. Now, that choice, you either, oh, I wanted to feel my emotional pain. Kate's choice is, at the moment, she wants to not feel her emotional pain. That's her choice, right? So what does that do? That creates, and this is how it works for everybody, that creates the mind. Remember, the mind is a tool, a tool of the soul. So the soul says, I want no emotional pain. What's the mind going to do? The mind's going to have to support the soul's belief that pain, emotional pain is bad. So what it's going to have to do is create a whole series of belief systems that are in complete harmony with the soul's decision. That's what it's going to have to do. So the, the mind creating this belief, that makes sense to me, because that's the belief that's in complete harmony with that soul choice. You follow me? The problem is when we hear another choice, Right, whether it be from Jesus or from some celestial spirits or from God, even you know, trying to help us through through the attraction events, and we hear another choice, then we've got a conundrum. The conundrum is now I have my mind saying that's the choice that I need to be making, and this supports my choice, but my other the other voice whether that be a spirit or someone else helping me or whatever, is saying, no, that's not true. And then the mind in this state of, it's not equilibrium anymore, it's now in a state of disharmony, it's now in a state of, of trauma, right? Now you've got one screaming at you one direction and one screaming at you the other direction, right? And as that screaming goes on, eventually it sinks down to the fact that actually maybe the mind's construct, the investment that's being created, is more to do with the soul choosing something than anything else. Right? So your choice to not believe in God or believe in God, most of those choices are all made from some kind of soul-based avoidance of an, emotional, of an emotion. Right? That's the reality. They've actually even done studies on it. Um, they've put in front of people who want to believe in a bigger power other than themselves, they put, they've put a, blank, a blank canvas with all this static on it and they always see a picture in it. They always see something. They imagine something's there when it's even not there. right? And the reason why we do that is because we want to have certain beliefs. And what I'm saying is most of our belief systems are driven by, and I'm talking about even people who believe in God at this point on the planet, most of their desire to believe in God has got nothing to do with whether God exists or not. It's got everything to do with what they want God to do for them. It's got everything to do with their unhealed, soul-based emotional choices, which they then impose upon their false belief system. So to them, God is going to be the saviour who comes and wipes the wicked out and, and gets everything up and running, you know, how they think it should be running. And, and that's because that's their soul feeling. They want that to happen. Right? It doesn't mean it's going to happen. It just means it's what they want to happen. And the same applies to the atheist. He doesn't want to believe in God for very similar reasons. He doesn't want to have a, an afterlife where there might be responsibility and it doesn't want to... You know, look at most scientists, they don't even want to investigate the spiritual existence or the, the existence of a spiritual body. Very basic thing in terms of our existence and they don't want to investigate it. Of course, of course most of them start investigating as soon as they pass, but, but not before then because, because it, it supports a whole series of false beliefs that they want to retain because those... Emo those False beliefs support the avoidance of specific emotions. Yep. So, Lily, I'm way over, and I'm eating right into our next thing. 
Sorry? Yeah. Yes, well, let's clarify it okay. in, in two minutes. All oh, right. Okay, the clarification is... Um, oh, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> now she's under pressure, right? <laughs> um, how do you know if the false belief is like a mind construct or an emotional thing that you actually have to feel through? So, like, with that, so I've got that false belief. Mm -hmm. But I was kind of thinking that it's a belief that is created by my parents teaching it to me. It doesn't really matter where it came from. It came from a number of sources. One of the sources is your parents feel that feeling their emotions they won't be able to cope with. So that's certainly one of those sources, right? And it also comes from a lot of your own choices. You, you also personally feel that feeling your emotions is a dangerous thing. And so it comes from a number of different sources. At this stage, most of you will have no idea what the sources are even, because, you, because there's so many of them. Like the world itself believes the same thing. But, but what I'm trying to show to you is that this false belief, while it may be emotional, at the end of the day is not the real problem. The real problem is what the false belief is trying to cover over. So it doesn't matter where <coughs> it comes from. What matters is that you do the telling yourself the truth and feeling the investment. Okay. Yep, cool. that's what matters. Is it doesn't matter where it came from. For, for every person, it's a different source, generally. right? Or there might be, in, and, and there is in most cases, multiple sources. right? Multiple sources. And, and you've also got some darker spirits around you who also believe exactly the same thing. So you've got influence from other people, you've got the emotional beliefs coming from your origin, family of origin, you've got your own choices which seem to support the belief system, and your own desire to avoid your childhood pain which causes you to have that particular belief. And, and really doesn't matter where any of these things came from, not really. What matters is that you realise that it's an excuse, and it, it's an excuse that you're making to, because of the choice you've already made at the soul level to avoid your emotional pain. And why you've made that choice? There could be another 20 reasons why you've made that choice. But it doesn't really matter. All that matters is that you get to feel the emotional pain. Do you see? Yep. Yep. And you, you can spend all this time psychoanalyzing and intellectualizing the whole process, but at the end of the day, the thing that's going to benefit you is just to get down and feel the emotional pain. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? That's, that's the thing that's precluding the love from flowing. That's the thing that needs to be focused on. That's the thing that stops you from getting educated by the source. That's the thing that stops this higher education coming from God to you. So isn't that the thing to spend your time on rather than, going, rather than saying to yourself, I can't cope with my emotion, I can't cope with my emotion, Oh, where did this belief come from? Oh, I've got to work way through where this belief came from. Who cares where it came from? It's wrong. <laughs> I, think, I think the reason I was thinking of taking that approach was because you know how you were saying to Pierre yesterday about the, I think it was Pierre, the source of unworthiness and looking at what creates that rather than actually feeling the unworthiness. Yep. So I think I was kind of using the same Well, uh, you this. could do the same with that. Let's rub this out and put in the false belief. Um, I'm unworthy. That's a false belief, isn't it? Yep. And what's the true belief from God? You are worthy. I am the highest of all God's creation. Okay. So I, I see there's a discrepancy there <laughs> between those two things. So I must have an investment. What's my investment? In believing that I'm unworthy. What's my investment? What am I trying to avoid by believing I'm unworthy? Um, well, that we've been treated unworthily. That I've been attacked. Let's yeah. put it blunt bluntly. Yeah. I've been abused and I don't want to feel about it. Right? 
So can you see the feeling of unworthiness is just exactly the same as false belief. It's been constructed by our mind right, to support not having to feel some other things. You follow? Exactly the same. So what I said to him is exactly the same as what I'm saying to Kate. Okay, thanks. Okay. It's just with a different topic, that's all. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good. Day. Is that helpful? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, what we'd like to do now, um, I should have, we, we were going to have a 20-minute break. We are going to probably still have a 20-minute break. Um, and I'll shorten the last session so because I, um, I feel we probably need a 20-minute break. It's now... 1323. Can we all come back at. Uh, yes, let's make it quarter two. Quarter to two. Is that okay with everyone? Quarter to two. And now uh, we'll get straight into giving some feedback to two people who I've already talked to you guys with. Can I just see you for just a couple of seconds before you leave? Pleasure. <laughs>